Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia. The holy grail of backpacking. These three amazing countries are usually the stepping stones for those seeking adventure travel. All three are fun, cheap, and as crazy as each other. They offer everything from street food to epic parties and fascinating culture. So let's start off by looking at their geographical locations on Earth. So these three nations are of course all located in Southeast Asia and are neighbours to one another. These three countries are usually visited by backpackers who are doing what's known as the Golden Circle, a route which takes you pretty much in one big circle across these three amazing nations. The capital cities are Bangkok, Hanoi and Phnom Penh all busy, crazy, but magnificent cities. So now let's take a look at the demographics of these three nations, starting off with their populations. So let's start off with the lowest out of the three, which is Cambodia, with roughly 16.7 million people, which makes them the 71st most populated country in the world, ever so slightly behind Senegal and just above Chad. However, it must be noted that Senegal and Chad's population growth percentage is much higher than Cambodia's. Next, we have Thailand, with a very respectable 69.8 million, making them the 20th most populous nation in the world, putting them just above the UK and quite a bit behind Germany. And finally, the most populated out of the three, we have Vietnam, at an impressive 97.3 million, making them the 15th most populated country on earth, just above the DR Congo and just behind Egypt. Now, of course, a high or low population isn't always a good or a bad thing. So instead, we'll now take a look at their population densities. For me, the lower here is the winner. So to no surprise, Vietnam is easily the most densely populated out of the three, with roughly 286 people per kilometre squared. After visiting Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi, I knew this would be coming. And again, to no surprise, Cambodia is the least densely populated out of the three, with just 86 people per kilometre squared. And then sitting nicely in between, we have Thailand, with 135 people per kilometre squared. With Thailand being the biggest country out of the three, this was definitely expected. All right, cool. Let's now take a look at the average age of the population for these three nations. This one actually took me by surprise. So we'll start off with the oldest out of the three, which is Thailand with an average age of 37. Then we have Vietnam at 29.9. And then finally Cambodia with a very young average age of just 24.9. A lower average age can definitely be a good thing. There's more chance of growth with a younger population and less sick old people to care for. Cool, so let's now move on to the geography of these three crazy countries, starting off with their total surface area. By looking at Google Earth, this one is quite obvious. So Thailand is the largest out of the three with around 513,000 squared kilometers. And then we have Cambodia with roughly 181,000. And then sitting satisfyingly in between, we have Vietnam, with roughly 331,000 square kilometers. Now, these three countries are quite oddly shaped. Thailand is wide in the north, but then becomes extremely narrow when you travel south of Bangkok. Cambodia is essentially a small circle, and then Vietnam is a long, coastal, narrow country. Okay, next, let's take a look at what percentage of these three countries are covered by forests. Forests have a key role in removing pollutants and cleansing the air, and are habitats for incredible animals such as elephants. So Cambodia has the most with around 56% of the nation being covered in forest area. Thailand has the least with 37%. And then sitting nicely in between, we have Vietnam with around 45%. And finally for geography, let's take a look at how much coastline these three countries have. This is a statistic where all three of these countries are really lacking. So with an absolute minuscule 443 kilometers, we have Cambodia. Only the south of the country is exposed to the Gulf of Thailand. Next, we have Thailand with roughly 3,200 kilometers. And then finally, Vietnam with just slightly more at 3,400 kilometers. South of Bangkok, Thailand is actually really narrow and only the east of the country is exposed to the coastline. On the west, it's actually Myanmar. All right, let's now move on to some statistics and facts about their economies. Starting off with their GDP, the gross domestic product. This reflects the value and productivity of an economy. 
It measures the market value of all the final goods and services produced annually. So starting off with the lowest out of the three, as expected, we have Cambodia. With a small population, small land size and waterways, it's no surprise that their GDP comes in at only 26 billion US dollars. Next, we have Vietnam with roughly 340 billion, putting them at 37th highest in the world. And then finally, the highest out of the three, Thailand with roughly half a trillion, making them the 25th richest country in the world. Whilst we're talking about GDP, let's now look at the GDP per capita. So this is calculated by dividing the total GDP by the population of the country. So Cambodia, of course, has the least with roughly 4,300 US dollars per person, followed by Vietnam with roughly 8,000, and then Thailand with around $20,500 per person. And finally, for economy, let's finish off on a high note for Cambodia. So out of the three, Cambodia actually has the highest GDP growth rate at 6.9%. Then just ever so slightly behind, we have Vietnam with 6.8%, which is likely due to the boom in tourism over the last decade or so. And then finally, Thailand lagging behind slightly with just under 4%. So next, let's take a look at the quality of living for these three countries, starting off with the obesity rate. So with roughly 10% of their adult population being classed as obese, Thailand still is a lot lower than westernized countries such as the UK, the US and Australia. Then we have Cambodia with 3.9%. And then finally, Vietnam with just 2.1% of their adult population being classed as obese, which actually ranks them as the number one country in the world. So kudos to Vietnam. Let's now take a look at the percentage of their populations that are classed as being under the poverty line. So Thailand takes the win here with just 7.2%, followed just behind by Vietnam with 8%, and then Cambodia with a much higher 16%. Hopefully with the year-on-year -year growth of Cambodia's GDP, alongside them having a youthful nation, they can decrease this number over time. And finally, to finish off with quality of living, let's now take a look at how many hospital beds and physicians there are per 1,000 people in each of these three countries. So to no surprise, Cambodia has by far the lowest, with 0.8 and 0.17 respectively. Then we have Thailand with 2.1 and 0.81. And then finally, taking the win, we've got Vietnam with 2.6 and 0.82. So a close one between Thailand and Vietnam, but Vietnam just pips them for the win here. And now to end the video, let's compare their top three things to do in each country according to TripAdvisor. Now this one is completely subjective and depends on what your interests are. So if you disagree with us, then let us know why in the comment section below. So starting off with Thailand, we have the Wat Phra Chetapon. One of the oldest and largest temples in Bangkok features the famous reclining Buddha, which is the largest in Thailand, measuring more than 150 feet in length. Number two, we've got Elephant Rescue Park, which is located in Chiang Mai, and their primary objective here is to rescue poor elephants from the circus, hard work, or who have been mistreated providing a safe and secure living environment. And then number three, the Sanctuary of Truth. The Sanctuary of Truth is a gigantic wooden construction. The top point of the building is about 105 meters tall. So next, let's look at Vietnam. So number one is the Khu Chi Tunnels. The tunnels of Khu Chi are an immense network of connecting tunnels located in Ho Chi Minh City and are part of a much larger network of tunnels that underlie much of the country. Number two, the Old Quarters. The Old Quarter is a name commonly given to the historical civic urban core of Hanoi. And then finally, number three, the Marble Mountains. The Marble Mountains are a cluster of five hills made from limestone and marble in Da Nang. It's also a well-known pilgrimage site with peaks, caves, tunnels and temples all just waiting to be discovered. Named after the elements metal, wood, water, fire and earth. And finally, let's take a look at Cambodia. So number one, this one was pretty obvious, Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is a temple complex in Cambodia and the largest religious monument in the world by land area, with its site measuring an incredible 162 hectares. Number two, the Twel Sleng Genocide Museum. And finally, number three, Otres Beach. So personally speaking, I think Thailand's top three attractions, according to travelers and TripAdvisor, take the win here. What do you think? Let us know below. So now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments section below which one you'd live in, which one you'd visit, and which one you'd avoid and why. We can't wait to read your comments. And while you're there, let us know which cities or countries we should do next. 
So I would personally live in Thailand because it's one of my favorite countries on earth. There's amazing parties, elephants, friendly people, and it's cheap, but it's not run down. I'd visit Cambodia because I've never been there before, and I'd have to avoid Vietnam because I've already visited there before. However, I would love to go back. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, a like would be much appreciated. And if you love the video, a sub to the channel would be marvelous. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.